what you love about tech is what I love about marketing. Because to me, the cool thing about marketing is that marketing done right, done well, creates aha moments for people where suddenly they have a different view, opinion, vision of what's possible. And that's the moment of marketing, right? I 100% agree with you. Hi, I'm Erin Marcus, former corporate executive turned entrepreneur and founder and CEO of Conquer Your Business. Welcome to the Ready Yet podcast. We're excited to bring you more than 100 episodes of interviews and insights designed to help entrepreneurs get the financial and emotional freedom they need in order to build a business and a life they're proud of. And welcome, welcome to this episode of the Ready Yet podcast. And my guest today, Joseph Katz, who I enjoy talking to because then we just do, get to turn into marketing nerds, right? Got an opportunity to be a marketing nerd. But I've been chatting with Joseph. I did your podcast, and now we're doing my podcast. We've had other conversations. I am excited to bring your your story and also your knowledge to the audience. And before we get into all that, why don't you? Give people that formal introduction of who you are and what you do. Thank you very much, Aaron, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So Joseph Katz, I've been in the world of marketing for pretty much my whole career. And for the last dozen years, I've been in the startup tech space, if you will. And my my real strength and where I really help companies is with customer acquisition, you know, that growth marketing, go-to-market strategy. How do I get my product and service into the hands of buyers? Um, I've generated hundreds of thousands of leads and sales and you know every metric that you can think of. And you know, that's why I think you and I have fun talking because we're we both deal with some similar types of companies. And you know, I just love doing it. I, I you know, I'm a problem solver. So if your problem is how do I sell more product, I help you figure out the solution to that product. Well, and here's how I know when I'm talking to other people who focus on marketing. It's simple outcome-based language. It's not fluffy. Like real marketers understand simple outcome-based language. It's not jargon. It's not fluffy. It's like, how do I solve? What's the problem that I solve and who do I solve it for? Exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, if I'm going to spend a dollar, am I getting $2? Am I getting $5? What am I getting for that dollar? And can I learn something from that spend? And can I improve on that? You know, it's really, to me, it's very basic, you know, foundational elements in marketing. Yes, there's a place for all that creative and beautiful signage and commercials. And but all we that hire those people. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we love those people. We hire them. <laughs> there's a place for them. But, you know, when, you, when you're talking to a person like myself and, and you, yourself, it's like brass tacks. Like, what am yeah. I going to do for this company? How can I make them better and sell more stuff? And I think people don't do this. I think the biggest mistake I watch companies make, small businesses make in marketing is they don't do this. They go straight to what's the fluffy, colorful thing that I can put out in front of somebody. The shiny object. The shiny object. And they don't do, I call it, they don't do the work before they go to work. Yeah, because it's easy to say, oh, I read this article on Facebook or Instagram or wherever, and this company had all this great success. So let me go do that. Right. They just sent one email and made a million dollars. (laughs) How many of those? How many of those have you gotten? Find my find my secrets to making millions. If it's that easy, then everyone be making million dollars. I I absolutely refuse to use the word secret in my marketing ever again. I bet you. (laughs) <laughs> Years ago, I loved it. And now no, it's just right? been beaten to death. I mean, it's, yeah, right. if it's so such it's, a secret. <laughs> it's such a secret. Like, why are you telling me? And Because here's the secret. We'll use the word. Here's the secret. And nobody wants to hear this. It's not in what you're doing. It's in consistency. Right. It's in doing the work. The secret really is you got to keep doing it. It's interesting you say that because when I talk to people for the first time, I make it very clear to them that I'm going to help them put the foundation in, right? You're going to, you got to do certain things right before you start spending money and doing all the other bells and whistles. And if you don't do those things right, 
nothing else is going to matter. Nothing else is going to matter. And the other thing that I know we both agree on, and, and I came up with this phrasing when I had my last business working with families with aging parents, and, and we would help families through what's really a logistical nightmare and an absolutely traumatic time in their in their lives and their families' lives. And what I would say, and I say this about business consulting and marketing as well, hiring me doesn't mean you're not going to have any problems. It just means when the problems happen, I will be there to solve them with you. Another thing a lot of people do, you know, is they think they hire you and you're going to solve every problem. Exactly. Not just the problem they hired you for, but everything is now your. Everything is, you know. Rainbows and puppies and unicorns. And, and, it, and it's going to happen immediately. <laughs> immediately. And right. immediately. It's, and that's it's, why, it's, right? August, it's August 1st. And by August 5th, you're going to have all my problems. So. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be perfect. It'll be perfect. <laughs> but the other side of this that I've been talking about lately is I think part of the challenge is we have this mindset as humans that eventually things that we're doing will be fixed right? Like the calendar that fell apart on me again. I don't know what happened. I took my off the ball and all of a sudden my time blocks are all messed up, right? That my calendar needs to be fixed. My mindset needs to be fixed. My marketing needs to be fixed. And when I say fixed, two things happen. Number one, it implies that it's bad now when truthfully it just is. It is what it is. And the the bigger problem is we create this situation for ourselves where we think there's going to be this magical day where everything's fine because it's fixed and then we don't have to worry about it ever again. Yeah, that's uh that's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not Talk, how it works. Talking about myths and marketing. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, well the, the you know a great reason or part of why that never happens is because the things keep changing, right? right. Change is going to keep happening. So if you're fixed today, tomorrow it's going to change. Right. So, and people don't want to hear that. And they don't right change is hard change is hard and small business ownership is hard. And 100%. it would be very, very, very nice to think something could just be fixed already. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I think you know, small businesses, startups, they're, they're very similar, right? They have limited resources. You know, sometimes there's a limited knowledge base and, and they just want everything to work because they got the vision. They've got the, they've got the plan, but life gets in the way. <laughs> Right. Business gets in the way. Life gets in the way. So how did you end up? Let's have the conversation about you said, I think you said about 10, 12 years now you've been doing. Your, plus. So how, what was before that? What's the origin story? What's the, how do you end up doing this on your own? So I've worked for, I worked for some big companies back in the day. Um, <laughs> quickly realized I am not the guy for the big company. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's one of those days where you like, you know, you push a project through on the backside of the politics and then you find out you get slapped down on the other side. Um, I, I wanted to try something new. It was, you know, technology was evolving and I basically was told, no, you stay in your lane, you know, like this is your. So then I started moving into the more technical side of uh, marketing and into the tech field, work for a number of tech companies. And when, when you work for a tech company, I I really look at it as you're really an entrepreneur in one way or another. Totally. Because, it's an entrepreneur, 100%. Yeah. You're yeah. Like, you don't know if the company is going to succeed or fail. So you're just hustling and you're just trying everything and working hard to make this thing work. Uh, and so I, I was thinking about this earlier. I think I've worked for like with and for about eight different startups at this point. I mean, it depends on how you count, maybe more or less. You know, what do they say, like 90% of startups fail or something to that yeah. effect? So my record is about 37%. However, there's a few that are still chugging along. So, you know, the jury's still out. <laughs> but on the, on the success side, I'd say 25% of the companies I work with have been hugely successful in one way or another. So, like, I think I've been pretty good at picking the companies I work with, um, I guess, compared to maybe the venture capital world, where, they, where they're fine with that, uh, you know, 90 plus percent failure. I rate. had a really hard time with those numbers when I got into this business, because in my background, you know, my background is in sales and marketing. However, I didn't realize the gift that I had in front of me for most of my career 
being who I was working for. So sales and marketing was easy. And my closing rate in my business with working with families with aging parents, my closing rate was like 80% because let's face it, nobody ever called me if they didn't have a problem. So there was no education-based problem, right? It was, hey, you call me, you've got a problem. It was, was there a job to close? If it did, I closed it. If there wasn't, you know. But when I moved into the consulting world, and people start telling me that, uh, you know, 5% of your leads turning into conversations and 20% of those closing, I I'm, I had a two year long meltdown about how there's <laughs> no way that that could be, how do you function with these numbers? All right, well, you know, I'll give you, I'll freak you out a little bit more. So my early career started in traditional direct response marketing and, and I've used those skills throughout and it's paid off well for me, but in direct response, 1% oh, is success. Right? <laughs> 1%. I know. That's so, terrible. But That's it could be very profitable. That 1% could exactly. be very, you know, it's just well, about. You know. So this is what turned it around for me. Everybody, and this is what somebody said to me, everybody who drives past McDonald's and doesn't pull in said no to McDonald's that day. And yet they're a billion dollar company. And my light went off. I'm like, oh, okay. Because more people drive past McDonald's than pull in. Yeah, there's there's plenty of opportunity out there. You just have to, you have to know how to go after it. Yeah. So the tech side, tell me more about the tech side. Is this because you like all the gadgets? <laughs> and that's why we, that's why you, that's where you and I go our separate way. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not so much of a gadget guy. Um, I, I I love the tech space just because of the innovation and the problem solving that some of these founders and entrepreneurs are, are working on. Uh, I've I've been fortunate to work in some pretty interesting companies, disrupting some pretty big industries. Nice. And it's just fun to solve those problems. And sometimes you succeed, sometimes you fail. It's just about the you know, the the bigger ecosystem. But like getting into the weeds, like it's e I shouldn't say easy, but going into like let's say a big consumer product, good company, right? They've got their multi-million dollar budgets. They know people are buying the soap or the crackers or the chips. Right. No big deal. They yeah, maybe they sell a little bit more, a little bit less. When you're building something from scratch and no one knows what you're doing, those yeah. are challenges. You know, figuring those, out yeah. how to get that to the market, how to get your message out there, what's going to resonate, what's not, what are the channels you need to use? You know, you're limited on budget. You know, you're, you're usually working with you know, thousands, not millions. You know, so right. it's just- well, and what you love about tech is what I love about marketing, because to me, the cool thing about marketing is that marketing done right, done well, creates aha moments for people where suddenly they have a different view, opinion, vision of what's possible. And that's yeah, no. the moment of marketing, right? I 100% agree with you. I, I remember the first startup I was working with, I was pre-COVID days, I was working from home. If you could believe people work from home before COVID. I know, so did I. <laughs> and uh, I was sitting at my desk and I was trying to figure out like what would move the needle for this company I was working with. And it just hit me. And I remember like vividly the light bulb going on. And I, I called my CEO right away. Like, hey, we got to do this. And it went through the whole thing. And, and we did it. And, you know, to this day, I think they're still running that program, you know, because it was just one of those moments, like you said, that, aha. Like, aha, this is what would change people's opinions about what's possible. Yeah. And every business there's no, like you said earlier, there's no silver bullet for any of this. You got to just try things, test things, explore it, understand who your customers are. Again, it's all the foundations of marketing, you know? Right. Marketing is testing by just by definition. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Ready Yet podcast brought to you by Conquer Your Business. With decades of experience, Conquer Your Business creates business and branding strategies that build multiple six and seven figure businesses. And we don't just show you what to do. We have an entire team of people available to help you do it, strategy and implementation. You can learn more and reach out to us by visiting conqueryourbusiness.com. So tell me about your podcast because your podcast is not about marketing. <laughs> You know, strangely enough, I decided to go into a completely different world with this podcast. So uh, this podcast, the Prime Life podcast, is all about aging and longevity. Uh, 
as I was exploring different parts of the tech ecosystem, I, I, I found out, you know, just kind of the way it happened. There's not a lot going on at the time. There wasn't a lot going on in this ecosystem and, and the population is aging and this country is going to hit a point where we're going to have more seniors than we're going to have under 18 year olds. And it occurred to me that this is an opportunity to really talk about some of the issues, challenges, opportunities in that space. So uh, working with one of the partners at the time, great group of people, uh, we built this podcast. We've been going almost a year now consistently every week. So that's uh, that's that in and of itself is an accomplishment. And we've oh, had some gosh, amazing yeah. guests, including yourself. So uh, yeah, it's been fun. As I kind of assume some um, correlations there, right? It is the puzzle, right? It's the, it's the marketing puzzle of what do I want to create? How do I want to create it? But with life after what you're supposed to do, right? Life after all the responsibilities, not are over, but maybe the kids are grown. There's now space in your life. And people are living longer, right? So that time period is going to be longer than most people expected. So it's just, it's been interesting. Um, and look, there, there's a marketing angle for me there, which I don't talk very often about, but I'll share here. Yeah. Is, you know, I get to talk to pretty interesting people. And, you know, some of those conversations lead to other interesting conversations and introductions to other people. You know, so it's just, for me, it's, it's an opportunity to talk and learn and listen and explore. So for folks who are listening, if you're going to combine any of that stuff, like what are you seeing going on right now? You know, as especially since that focus in tech really puts you out on the growth edge of the market because, you know, innovation is where the changes are happening. What are you seeing happening in marketing that will trickle down to the rest of the business world? So dare I go in this direction, but I'll throw it out there. <laughs> Artificial intelligence, right? It's the uh, buzz of the day. Uh, there are some pretty interesting things going on there. And I'm talking beyond chat GPT. There, there's a lot happening in that space that will impact how companies market and bring their products to market um, or even just serve a customer. I mean, there's, you know, there's already plenty of bots that just do the customer service, but it, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens there. I, I've been to a bunch of AI events I am attending an, uh, another one in a couple of weeks. I've play, been playing with different tools. I mean, there's so what's literally no the, shortage. Give me the pros and cons, because I know how we use it. We use it to shortcut time. Oh, right? yeah, that's that's our definitely biggest optimization. one. I mean, to me, I don't think we're using it anywhere near where the exciting stuff is. We're using it to shortcut how long things take. We're not removing the humans from what we do, but we're making the job their jobs easier. Yeah. So I'll just touch on the human piece. So I, I personally believe at this point in time, it's not about removing humans. It's about, to your point, efficient, greater, greater efficiency, productivity. AI, and I'll just say this as a like, word of caution for everyone, you definitely need to have that human touch. You whether, can tell. You can completely okay. tell when somebody's trying to shortcut doing the work and taking something straight out of an AI tool and putting it out in the world. Like it just. It's just not it, good. <laughs> it's not good. It doesn't resonate. Yeah. And the other thing I would just tell people is that not everything that comes out of an AI tool is going to be correct. You know, there's there's a lot of misinformation, wrong information, and you would want to avoid looking foolish or, you know, bad in, in your customer's eyes. So those things aside, uh, the tools that right now, one of the tools I'm playing with happens to be a, text to video tool. So it allows you to take a, let's just say an article, a blog post, what have you, and create a video out of that within seconds. So create a video out of it using what? So it uses AI. So it, the AI tool will kind of analyze the text and then pull images from the open, you know, open source images that reflect oh, cool. the article, pull the, the most relevant text points out and then create like a 30 or 60 second video. Now, like everything, it's not perfect. I've, I've been playing with it. The video gets created very quickly, but you know, it takes a couple of minutes. You got to go in there and edit the text or maybe yeah. replace an image or something. But again, people consume information in different ways. So now you can create one piece of content and replicate it into another, and then you can serve it out into a, all your 
And we're actually doing not quite that same thing, but on our podcast, right, we shoot on video. And so we use the snippets on social media and we are now using an AI tool where we can go into the transcription. It's amazing. You can take out the ums, the ahs, what have you, and just highlight a piece of text. And it instantaneously makes us the video highlight that used to take a good hour to figure out, well, I got to listen. I have to hit stop. I have to hit go. I have to hit cut. And yeah, now yeah. you just highlight the text and it does it for you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, there are tools like that. I mean, those are perfect and examples. And it's like $12, by the way. Oh, yeah. All... I think we're paying like a $12 a month thing for this. This is not a difficult. Right. You're not uh, thousands of dollars. <laughs> right. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. And these are just, these are the more basic tools. Obviously, when you get into things like machine learning, where the tool is actually trying to become smarter, mm -hmm. it's a whole nother level of of information and, and the world's going to speed up there. We're talking primarily right now, generative AI using yeah. those tools to kind of generate new content. But yeah, I think that's an interesting area right now and it's going to continue to evolve. No, it's interesting. The thing that strikes me on this is the other, I'm seeing the same thing, but at the same time, at the exact same time, the other thing that I'm watching is that mass marketing is not working as well as relationship building marketing. And so I think it's important to not confuse AI tools with really like you would uh, think that those two things don't go together. <laughs> well, I'll just touch on the mass marketing piece first. So other than the Super Bowl and maybe one or two other events, there's not a lot of mass anymore, right? Everything's been fractured into little, very niche audiences, which is, as a marketer, probably better, right? Because you can get your, find your audience and be there. Uh, I would agree with you 100% on the relationship piece, you know, partnerships, relationships, you know, finding, that's always going to be better than just trying to bombard someone with, you know, a thousand messages online, banners or what have you. Well, and I think part of it is also because no, but what maybe it's because of AI. Um, nobody believes anything they hear or read anymore. You can't. You really kind of, as someone with a journalism degree, who you know, we used to have to do this exercise. I'm, you know, I'll tell straight up. I'm 53 years old. I was doing this exercise back in the 80s in college, where you would take one story and look at the different headlines across three or four different platforms and then try to understand what you know can you predict or can you then extrapolate what that platform's view is and that's just gone so far to the extreme to the point where all the you know it doesn't this is not about politics they're all lying to you at this point because they've gone to such an extreme yeah, we live in a very divisive world at the moment. So yes, well, so I think one of the reasons mass marketing isn't working the way it did two, three, five years ago is because of that extreme divisiveness, and now nobody believes anything. So I can't say nobody. Unfortunately, too many people still believe the whole, you know, <laughs> insta tactic. Just do this one thing, buy this funnel, make send this email. Yeah, yeah, you're a millionaire. I get your point. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're a millionaire. I, I've got a secret that you could buy for a thousand dollars. Then it'll make you millions. You'll be you'll be set for this life. Is, right? <laughs> if it was easy, everyone would do it. If all it took was a book and an email, we'd all be millionaires. Uh, I, that that's one of my favorite things. You get the email from a CEO. I read this article. We should do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> Great. Off. I'll check that off the list. Yeah. <laughs> the good news is like most CEOs, myself included, we have no attention span. So if you just don't reply, odds are that'll just go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, I'm sure you've seen it, right? Like, oh, this is like, I read a Harvard Business Review article about this company that did X, Y, or Z. We should do that. We should change everything that we're yeah. doing on the fly in the moment. And I'm not saying it's the wrong thing, but it's like the wrong approach to the problem. Like, right. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So, all right. If people want to continue this conversation with you, all things nerdy marketing, yay. And check out your podcast as well. What is the best way for them to uh, reach out to you, find you all of the, all the contact information? Excellent. Yeah. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, if anyone wants to continue, you can reach me at josephkatz.com or josephkatz at gmail.com. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm all over the place. Pretty easy to find. Yeah. I spell Joseph with an F, J-O-S-E-F. 
So right. cats with a K. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> Joseph with an F, cats with a K. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Like you're not hiding. We will make sure that all the links are included in the show notes so that people can find you and learn more about what you're doing. Um, thank you it. for sharing your insights, your time, your energy, all of the things. You know, I love chatting with you. It's been a lot of fun. 